To be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild, and this is part 24, which is actually called To Be or Not To Be, That Is The Question. At the moment, I'm removing clamps, as you can see, from the two pieces of mahogany that are stuck together with cyanoacrylate adhesive. The brass pieces are also stuck to the mahogany. I didn't bother showing you the procedure by which I removed those. But it did involve the use of a small hammer and a small amount of ultraviolence to separate the brass from the mahogany. To separate metal parts that have been stuck together using cyanoacrylate adhesive, a shock is required. Not an electric shock, health and safety warning, just an impact shock. I now have a nice piece of mahogany corner angle, but it's too big for the job, so I'm just trimming it down on the bandsaw. And after using a bandsaw, it's a good idea to have a quick look at your hand to make sure all your fingers are present and correct. And if they are, you can carry on and put the piece of mahogany up against the work. But if you do find yourself a bit light in the finger department after using the mahogany, it's probably a good idea to go to the nearest A&E department. Oh yes, and don't forget to take the missing finger bits with you. At the same time that I was trimming the piece of mahogany on the bandsaw, I cut a piece of brass, and tried that in place to see what that looked like. No, I definitely don't like the brass. Back to the mahogany. It's not looking too bad, but there's something wrong. As this whole episode is about making decisions, well, most of it, I thought, aha, a decision. I will spray the mahogany with some red primer and see what that looks like. And it actually looks a little bit better. The difficulty is seeing the bigger picture. Looking at this clip, I'm almost tempted to paint the piece of mahogany exactly the same colour as the brick. That could look okay, I suppose. But then I thought to myself, I know, I'll paint it black. And I didn't really like that at all. It matched the bed plate, but that's about it. I thank everyone who suggested using Doll's House corner bricks. I am quite aware what's available in the marketplace, and I've looked at them and tried them in the past, and I've not been happy with them. It's obvious that mahogany's out of the question, it doesn't look right. In the same way as this small frame didn't look right. I thought to myself, I wonder what it would look like if I painted it with some LMS red, like the rest of the engine. So I set to and painted the frame Crimson Lake, which is LMS red. And then unfortunately I did degenerate into play mode and pushed the piece around the board with the paintbrush. And that was my futile attempt at time-lapse video. I thought, aha, I will paint the corner with this LMS red as well. I can't do anything with it, I can't actually put it on the base until it dries. We'll see what it looks like. As I had the pot of paint open, I thought it's an ideal opportunity to give all the parts a second coat. This is a very tedious job and I haven't shown all the rubbing down that I did before I gave it a second coat. Nevertheless, it will be good in the end. This is a big engine and there's a lot of paint to do. Now it's onto the cylinder. Before painting the cylinder, I gave it a quick rub down with some 800 wet or dry paper. This is a good idea to key the paint for the second coat and it removes any specks of dust that the first coat picked up. I hate to admit it, but the first coat of paint on this cylinder had a couple of runs in it. So I used some 800 grade wet or dry sandpaper to remove the runs, and everything should be fine on the second coat, because this second coat is not quite as thick as the first one. This episode is all about making the right decision. At any stage in the process, if you make a mess of it by making the wrong decision, it is not a good thing. In a similar way, I suppose, in the morning, if you get out of bed and throw your underpants against the wall, and if they stick to the wall, it's probably a very good idea to change them. That would be a good decision. In this clip, after rubbing down the steam chest cover, I'm giving this another coat of paint. In fact, I'm giving most of the parts another coat of paint, so I don't really know why I said that. I have said many times I don't like painting. It's a necessary thing to do. And once I get into it, I tell myself, yes, it's good painting, it's good painting. But it's not. It is really, really, really boring. Ah, oh, that's better. I've just taken my medication. Right, with renewed vigour and viscosity, or whatever the word is, I am now painting the bottom half of the main bearings. And finally, this selection of parts have all had a second coat of paint. So once the paint has dried and hardened, the parts can start to be reassembled and fitted to the bed plate. Time for a bit of relaxation now. This is a tin of brass or wadding. This stuff is amazing. It's been around for a long, long time, and it's as good today as it was a long, long time ago. I would use it for cleaning copper and brass parts. I would start off on a polishing spindle, I have one of those, and then I would finish off by hand with brasso and finally with a cotton cloth, and all the parts come up looking rather well. 
For the final part of this episode, I'm temporarily fitting the pulley and the other parts of the crankshaft. They were initially very tight. I think they must have been bored to fit the original crankshaft, which was undersized. This crankshaft is three quarters of an inch in diameter, and now everything is a nice snug fit on this crankshaft. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.